This is example 6 from module 2 in lecture 7. We have a production function where the number of units of output depends on the units of capital input and the units of labour input. We also have the price of a unit of output and the cost per unit of capital, R, and the per unit wage rate. From this we determine a profit function, revenue minus costs. Revenue is price times quantity. The costs are the number of units of capital times the cost of capital and the number of units of labour times the wage rate. We're given values for P, R and W and also the form of our production function. We can see that's a Cobb-Douglas production function and looking at this moment you should be able to tell something about it. That's right, it has decreasing returns to scale. We want to find the profit maximising levels of K and L. There will be a stationary point so I'll use the first order conditions. And then we want to show that that's actually a maximum. We'll use the second order conditions. It's always good to summarise the information you're given. Here we have the information from the previous slide. We can substitute the various values into our profit function. So we'll have 6 times, 2 times k to the half, l to the quarter, minus 1.2 times k, minus 0 0.6 times l. We can simplify that. Now we want to use the first order conditions to find the stationary points. The first order conditions are del pi del k is equal to zero and del pi del l is equal to zero. Del pi del k is equal to, we're differentiating with respect to k holding l constant. So we'll have 12, bring down the exponent to a half k to the a half minus one, so it'll be minus a half. L to the quarter, that's a constant. Minus 1.2 minus zero, because L is a constant. And we set that equal to zero. Simplifying that gives us 6K to the minus a half. L to the quarter minus 1.2 equals zero. That implies that k to the minus one half times l to the quarter is equal to 0 0.2. Del pi del l is equal to, well, we'll have 12, the exponent was one quarter, k we're treating as a constant, so it'll be k to the half, l to one quarter minus one, so it'll be minus three quarters, minus, well, the k term uh, is a constant, so that's equal to zero, so we'll have minus 0 0.6, differentiating 0 0.6L. Set that equal to 0. That's equal to 3 times k to the half. L to the minus 3 quarters is equal to 0 0.6. That implies that k to the half, L to the minus 3 quarters, is equal to 0 0.2. Let's call that equation 1 and that equation 2. Both equation 1 and equation 2 are equal to 0 0.2. That implies that k to the minus 1 half l to the 1 quarter is equal to k to the half l to the minus 3 quarters. We can multiply both sides by k to the half times l to the 3 quarters. So we'll have k to the half l to the 3 quarters times k to the minus a half l to the 1 quarter is equal to k to the half times l to the three quarters times k to the half l to the minus three quarters. Well that implies we have k to the half times k to the minus a half, well that will just be equal to one. l to the three quarters times l to the quarter. Again summing the exponents that will give us l to the one. So we'll have l on the left hand side is equal to We'll have k to the half times k to the half, summing the exponents, that gives us k, times l to the three quarters times l to the minus three quarters. Well, that'll be l to the zero, so it'll be one. So we have l equals k. We can call that three. We can substitute three into one. So one was k to the minus half, l to the quarter is equal to 0 0.2, implies that k to the minus a half well, k to the quarter is equal to 0 0.2. That implies k to the minus one quarter 
is equal to 0 0.2. We have k to the minus 1 is equal to 0 0.2 to the 4. That implies k is equal to 1 on 0 0.2 to the 4. And that's equal to 625. We'll call that k naught. Since k is equal to L, we'll have L naught is also equal to 625. So we have a stationary point at k naught L naught is equal to 625, 625. Our next step is to show that this stationary point is a maximum. We'll do that using the second order conditions. Here we have the test for the second order conditions. If pi 1 1 is less than or equal to 0, pi 2 2 less than or equal to 0, and pi 1 1 times pi 2 2 minus pi 1 2 squared is greater than or equal to 0, for all k and l in our domain, then our profit function is a concave function, and k naught l naught is a global maximum. I'll write out the first order partials so we can see where the second order partials are coming from. We have del pi del k. That implies that del squared pi del k squared is equal to, we bring down the exponent of k minus 1 half, it gives us minus 3, k to the minus half minus 1, so minus 3 on 2, l to the 1 quarter. Again we start with del pi del l, that implies that del squared pi del l squared is equal to well, 3 times minus 3 quarters will be minus 9 on 4 times k to the half l to the minus 3 quarters minus 1 so minus 7 on 4. Next we need to evaluate the third condition. The first step is to find del squared pi del l del k or pi 1 2. We can differentiate del pi del k with respect to l or del pi del l with respect to k. Either way we'll get 3 on 2 times k to the minus 1 half l to the minus 3 quarters. We can substitute into our third condition and we get minus 3 times k to the minus 3 on 2 l to the 1 quarter times minus 9 on 4, k to the half, l to the minus 7 on 4, minus 3 on 2, k to the minus 1 half, l to the minus 3 quarters, all squared. We can expand that and simplify. In the first term we have minus 3 times minus 9 on 4, so that's plus 27 on 4. We have k to the minus 3 on 2 times k to the 1 on 2. So that would be k to the minus 1. l to the 1 quarter times l to the minus 7 on 4 will give us l to the minus 3 on 2. Squaring the second term we'll have 9 on 4 times k to the minus a half squared will be k to the minus 1. l to the minus 3 quarters squared will be L to the minus 3 on 2. We can see we can simplify that. Subtract the second term from the first term. And that gives us 18 on 4, or 9 on 2, times K to the minus 1, L to the minus 3 on 2. K is greater than 0, L is greater than 0, and our coefficient is positive. We have three positive numbers, so our third condition is greater than or equal to 0 for all k and l in our domain. We saw that pi 1 1 was minus 3 times k to the minus 3 on 2 times l to the quarter. Again, since k and l are both greater than 0, this will be less than or equal to 0 for all k and l in our domain. Pi 2 2 is equal to minus 9 on 4 times k to the minus a half, l to the minus 3 quarters. Again, this will be less than or equal to 0 for all k and l. Our three conditions for a global maximum are met. We've demonstrated that pi kl is a concave function. Therefore, 
k naught l naught equal to 625 625 is a global maximum.